Hey guys, how's it going? I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. Hey, I'm Zero, and today in Anime Reaction, watch the third episode of Psychono Flat. If you want to check out our reaction to the third episode of Psychono Flat, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comments section, because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you'd like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga, and don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So we start Ooh. off with uh, the meeting between. <laughs> yes, between uh, Rouge and Rouge and. Uh, bless software. Bless software. Is it bless or blessing? Which, bless. which is hilarious. Blessing. In Cute. both the way that they do the graphics, <laughs> the way that they actually have that uh, airy versus. Oh, what was her name? Uh, what, Izumi or something like that? Yeah, Izumi. Yeah. Kato. Okay. And Kato is just sitting in the back. Texting. Kato does what Kato does. Megami was fucking awesome in that scene. It's yes, like super fucking epic, you know, meeting between the two, and then it goes over to Kato. Click, 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 click. click, click, click. And then you have that sort of like otherworldly, almost like Zawarudo effect. And then Kato just comes in and just, you know, breaks the ice. Oh, hey, he's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she... When it comes to breaking the ice, Kato is a Russian icebreaker. <laughs> She's um, like, I, I also like when uh, when um, Tomoya, Tomoya and uh, the other guy were facing off, and he, he's like, where's Izumi? Oh, she's right here. And he hot gestures cocoa? to the side, <laughs> and there's like two cans of hot cocoa sitting on the side. Uh, hot cocoa? Hot cocoa? <laughs> and, then, and the music like out. fades for a second, and then she walks out. Oh, man. Uh, that was hilarious. And then also when Izumi and Eri get into it for real. The shade being thrown, and then it leads into the cutest fight ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Finch is kind of there. However, I am still pissed with uh, with uh, Ru Rouge and Rouge. Yeah. Right. Because what they're doing is fucking bullshit. Sam, yeah, so, okay, yeah, our boy here, the uh, Dojinshi uh, groupie, as Mr. Ethical calls him. He's roped in the writing team of an actual game studio to rip off the game that Bless Software is doing. Yeah. A guy and to sell it and to sell it nearby when Rouge and Rouge is a They're already a big circle. Yeah, it is already a really big circle. It is really messed up. And then the you know, Izumi and the other guy are sit, you know, sitting there like, oh well, you know, it doesn't matter that we're a big circle. Well, yes, the fuck it does. Yeah, because it means you're gonna you're going to get sales. You're gonna out promote bless. You're gonna yeah. out you're, out, you're gonna out promote. You're just gonna get sales based off of your name, and then because your games are coming out at the same time and they're basically the same subject matter, everybody's gonna think that bless, bless software is ripped you them. off. Yeah, it's not a yeah, it's not a fair fight, no matter how you spin it. Yeah, it, it's horrible. It's horrible. It totally happens in real life, but it's horrible. Yeah. This is, yeah. But yeah, basically what, what Rouge and Rouge is trying to do is kill off competition before they even really get started. Yeah. And that, that's just absolutely... Despicable. Despicable. Nothing personal, it's just business. Well, actually, it is personal, though. Well, yeah, too. it is totally personal because... Mm. They're the only idea... doing it because uh, Izumi wants to face off with Ariri. Because Eri won't join in on Rouge and Rouge. Yeah. That's it. Um, Blessing has literally monopolized on Eri and Utaha being uh, game and artists. Game, game writer and game artists. But yeah. Oh, so man. I really, really hate. Well, I really hate that um, that uh, the that type of story anyway. With the you well, know the having to underdogs, compete, you know, that underdog story. Yeah, but uh, man, that's really fucking bullshit. Mm. So we continue on seeing. Um, yeah, I forgot the main characters. Tomoya. Tomoya. Mr. Ethical. Mr. Ethical. Um, we get 
we get him trying to figure out what story he wants to choose because the guy from Rouge and Rouge freaks him out by saying, you know, Utaha is like, we got, we got Metronome and Love's writer, right? How can you even think that we're gonna, you're gonna be better? And the guy basically says, yeah. you said it yourself, it's a team effort. And that's well, no, no, it, that wasn't really what freaked him out. He, he said, um, you know, well, I think that we might actually win. Yeah, and our be, stories. Because this guy, like, is able to basically predict what's going to be commercial successes. Like, in, in the past, he's always been right about it. Yeah, he's not an idealist like Aki is, so he's not interested in he's not cult. Yeah, he's not even interested in the... Uh, in, like, the quality in, of the In the art. He's not, he's not interested in the art of making games. He just wants to sell them. Yeah, he's, he's solely interested in the money. So for him to say something like that carries weight. Yeah. But so Aki is trying to pick this story, and he sa- he basically says, you know, it would be much easier for me to tell if it was actually in the game. Ding dong. So Kato says, okay, let's do it. This weekend. Yeah, this weekend, let's go ahead and put this put the new story into the game. That this is after, um, I, what what Kumo just put up, you know, it is worth keeping in mind that he is biased. But uh, that going back to Kato, Kato had a run in with Utaha, yeah. which Utaha says, you know, the way that things are, um, you wouldn't get why this choice means anything to me. Or yeah, if I told you, it w- th- it would lose all meaning. Yeah. Because this is going to affect her own future and her future with you know, her the future of her relationship with Aki. So, yeah. She's Curiosity been- killed the cat. Curiosity is killing the Kato. And, um... <laughs> she must know. She must know. Yeah. So she gets Can really, really fucking hyped and... Pushes Aki to do a all weekender basically mm. to make this game a reality. I did like the what are they married? Yeah, that what are they married? <laughs> Where'd she go? Well, she said she's packing up her things and moving back home. Oh, that trolling! Oh man, um, that but, dude would fit in well with us, I think. But yeah, so they decide to to pull an all weekender basically. And put this the new story into the game. However, after the first night, they realize that they're not making enough headway, so they need more bodies, basically. Speaking of bodies, after Mr. Ethical gets uh, choked by his cousin, he gets more bodies in the form of the band Icy Tail, who uh, yeah. happen to be yeah. handy with computers, well, except for his cousin. That sexy body is needed. Woo! Uh, that ass out of nowhere. That ass out of nowhere. It's like an RKO. Kato in my bed would be fantastic. But... (laughs) No, she looks so... Well, yeah, so basically they get, um... They get Icy Tail there, and Aki threatens them, you know, if you don't help, then I'm gonna quit being your manager. And he's scored them a good load of their gig, so... This is big. Yeah. Blackmail! Big time blackmail. (laughs) Uh, I was like... If this causes you to have to break up with any of your boyfriends, I don't care. The <laughs> company is not responsible. Blessing Software is not responsible. I hate all of you. <laughs> I love I love how everybody in the band was like, "All right, let's get to work." As soon as as soon as that person was, it's like, like I, I need to I, I need to. You know how long it's been since I've been on a date? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was like, "All right, let's get let's get to work." Yep. Yeah. It's like that's it. We can't take her seriously anymore. Oh man, that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord, body talks. Uh, speak to me. Psychono is a show where the body talks. Uh, tell me your secrets. Salute to, to booty. booty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so they work on it all weekend, get it all put together, and Aki is able to play you were through it. Something. 
Huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, Aki was able to play through the game himself and uh, test play it, you know, go through. It covers the entire, the, all the scripts. Oh, yeah. Something I also want to point out. In order to get enough computers for everybody, they had to borrow computers from Ariri. Right. So and we see a to... portion where Ariri is experiencing artist block. Yeah, leave it to me, she says, and then we go to her room, which has a bunch of rejected drafts all over the floor. Yeah, shit looking like on her end, yo. Uh, yes, Kato's best waifu. Kato. Best Kato was girl. awesome in this episode, that is for sure. But, uh, but yeah, so then after the ending, we get a stinger where... It's during the school festival, and Aki meets with Utaha. Oh, boy. And because Utaha is very... Um, <laughs> Utaha is very nervous about what Aki's going to pick. Of course. And he basically says, No, nope, sorry, you need to rewrite it. This is a shit game. A and B, here comes C, the technical option. Oh! That was a nasty plot twist, not going to lie. Oh my god, that was a stinger. That's stinger. probably that, yeah, that's probably the hardest yeah. hitting stinger I've felt in a long time. That's the hardest plot twist I've you know, I've experienced in a long time, anime or otherwise. I don't think I, I came across a plot oh, twist that hit but... me that hard since the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. Right? Holy shit. Yeah, so well yeah. done to the writers on that. And it's how I said it uh, previously as well when they last talked pretty much. Don't be afraid to, you know, tell me what you think. And straight up, he told her, this is a crap game. Oh. But this sets the stage for a last-ditch team effort. Maybe. So or this yeah. guy's going to fall the shit and... Uh, I mean, busting. technically, they probably still have a couple of months before Winter Comic Cat. Because I'm... Most school festivals, I think, are held in the fall. Well, it's approaching crunch time, and they're basically going to have to start from square one. Yeah, Utaha was the one that got stung. I love I love the fact that Aki decided not to be a fanboy anymore. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the whole, I wonder how Utaha is going to take this. I wonder how Avery is going to take this. Right? Because, I mean, yeah, whatever art's there, you know, is ready, but... Oh, man, if they're starting from scratch, then... Oh, boy. So are you... You motherfucker! <laughs> you Ouch. monster. Ouch. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> but, yeah. This show just keeps getting better and better. I know. And this is why, this is why I love Psychono. Oh my god. You never know how it's gonna hit you. I just yeah. This is this is one of those slice of lives that It's a good slice of life because the conflicts are of high quality. And the I um think. the characters are real. Like they're mm. fucking real. Yeah, like say Utaha, um now I gotta talk about her again, but she's not always the you know uh, cold, standoffish, aloof type. She's not that uh, archetype all the time. In this episode, she is palpably nervous. Yep. Damn near terrified because she knows, as you guys pointed out, she's about to make a big decision about her future, not just her own personal future, but her future with Aki. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> and then Kato, you know, uh, instead of being uh, detached, as uh, Tomia says. She actually gets curious about what's going on behind the scenes. And she really and she prods into Utaha's business. Normally it's not like her. So Best Harem. Whoo boy. Um, it makes a damn good case. It makes a really good fucking case. <laughs> it makes it an excellent case. It's it's up there with your Grisayas and I mean the shit. only one of them that I don't particularly care for is Michiru. Hmm. But that's probably mostly because she doesn't get any airtime. She doesn't get a whole lot of airtime, you know, which is a shame. She's still a likable character, though. Yeah. And uh, and one, you can buy the concept of her. Her existence has a place in this story. It's not unnecessary. Her body's getting all the airtime. 
Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I think we should go ahead and end this. Comic fan service character. Oh, man. So let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Zero. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you, you next time. time. And go ahead and click on my face to go to our most recent Otaku Saga Talks. Click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And click on the waifu to subscribe to Otaku Saga. And if you'd like to help support us, please go ahead and check out our Patreon page.